VG are one of the most consistent teams at TI10, able to flex to their opponents' game plans while under constant pressure. While they'll fight hard for first blood, this team is never afraid to wait out until the moment to land the killer blow is found. Are they your top dog going into this one, Lizard? Uh, it's hard to say. The momentum is definitely with them. On the other hand, IG, you can never count them out. You can remember the question mark. It was very difficult for them back then. It didn't matter. Well, let's meet their opponents, IG. They only dropped two games in the entirety of the group stage and came into the main event as our top seed, dominating until Team Secret crashed the IG party. Today, Invictus will be out to set the pace with Panache and dominate the race to the top four. But can they crush their regional rivals and get their confidence back after being sent into the lower bracket and the last chance saloon? Or maybe we should say booth, boys. It's a tradition here at TI10. Now, let's talk about these teams in more details because yesterday, Vici kind of shocked us a little bit because I said just uh, a few moments ago that, that Vici are known for this kind of consistency. There was kind of criticism about their drafts, particularly in the group stage, about not being varied enough. And then they came straight out the gate with a, a Rubik pick and the first Omni night of the tournament against T1. Uh, Kyle, did that surprise you or was it something you expected? Uh, the picks didn't because they're traditionally just answers to first pick mag. So mm -hmm. that was the, they, they had an idea, right? And these two teams, specifically Vici, they're very technical. You know, they game plan their lineup and their execution. You know, if you think about like Casey's painting, right? That's a representation of like OG's play style and to an extent spirits. Whereas this, this team, it's always regimented. Like there's, this is tons of experience. And when you think like Rubik Omni, I think that was the first Omni of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Like that's still like the classic Magnus counter. It's just not good enough. You just shouldn't, you shouldn't do that again. I don't think they will. Mag's too good, but that was the idea. And and that's the thing with, with Omni Knight is he was, he was nerfed recently in the recent patch and he was only a little bit nerfed, people say. However, he just obviously hasn't been trusted through the group stage. So I suppose it's the fact that they trusted it to work during the main stage and as a, as a counter as opposed to something that they potentially wanted to do themselves. I think that was why maybe it was surprising potentially for them as well. Yeah, uh, when when it comes down to like these later stages of TI, the, the meta is mostly figured out. So, and there's only so many bands in the first phase. So you have to choose what you're going to play, play against. So if they think like, oh, we got this throwback counter to the mag play style, we'll let them get mag. We'll try this counter. And yeah, it got nerfed and nobody's playing it right now, but it could be like that little tool that you pull out of nowhere. That's perfect for the yeah. situation that can win you a fight and win you a game. So what are we expecting from them today then? Um, we'll see if they decide to go with the same, with the answers, with the Rubik and Omni Knight, because I completely agree with my fellow panelists, but I'm in a different camp. I'm in the camp, if it's too broken, just ban it out. Get over with it and pick your own Pick your own lineup that's actually still strong in the meta. You don't have to make answers for something that's too well, strong. It goes both ways, though, because upper bracket, like the reason IG is down here, they went with their bread and butter, right? Yep. Wisp Mars and Puppy in his vintage style. He gives them what they want. Everyone knows JT wants to play Mars, so they pick a safe lane TA, mm. right? It, I go back, like, Liquid versus Secret, previous TI. Secret gets knocked out by Kuro. First game, first pick Alchemist. They just didn't realize how strong this hero was. Mm. Second game, last pick Tinker. So, like, both concepts won, where sometimes a hero's just too good, and sometimes there's a hero that provides such an answer, it makes what looked like a broken hero fall off. And it's even uh, interesting that it's for the same captain, for Puppy, that it happened in multiple tournaments that he lets something go through, and he manages to adapt to it, to a broken hero, he wins against it. Then a couple of series after, he lets it go yeah. through again, and he loses. But that, that's what Vici Gaming tried to do, in a way, with their with their um, uh, Omni Knight pick. They want to get yep. those counter solutions. So if you think you have the the tool that's going to do it you let it through and you play the counter and maybe you yeah. get your win and you got to figure that they have confidence right because like t1 took a game off of lgd in the upper bracket mm -hmm. 
And I think IG, it, it's easier to play as you come through the lower bracket. I think it's often why we see that one team make a run because you have momentum. You're playing every day. You've got confidence. Whereas if you have those days off and you're like, you're, you're almost watching too much because there's this balance of, okay, what do we do well? What do we like it to do? It gets through our heads, right? What, what's working? Yeah. And you're out of your comfort zone. And, and that comfort zone is a better place for Vici. I counted them out one or two series ago when they faltered. And IG, they just faltered and they haven't had that recovery period just yet. Right, well, it is really nearly time for the draft. So let's hear the voice of God and make this thing official. VG Gaming versus Invictus Gaming. Game one. I'm in the middle. Welcome to the first game between Avicii and IG. As we get ready for this first draft, what an exciting encounter. We get a double Chinese, uh, Chinese versus Chinese game, sorry, where uh, probably the best regions to be competing here. Who is going to be able to make it through? Expectations here at BSJ. Well, there's uh, some heroes that are equally contested amongst these two teams, and one of those is Lion. Both these teams love that hero, and I'm expecting to see that on either side in okay. the first round of the draft. You love the Kaka Lion, I believe, right? Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. Effie? I'm just curious to see if we're going to have a Magnus come up, because while historically they haven't played that much of it, it just feels too good right now. And if you look at these first phase rounds already, it's in the pool. Oh, Old Eleven did play the Magnus once and almost, I mean, I think he carried the game with that, game, with that Magnus, so I wouldn't be surprised if VG Gaming decided to run it. They did prioritize the oh. Tiny more and they give it away to IG. That's very interesting. We'll see, EG made the same mistake. Uh, against VG, I thought at least it was a mistake, uh, prioritizing the Tiny. Uh, actually, sorry, it was no, OG no. against... Why Spirit. Am I, against Spirit, sorry. Yeah, and, OG and, made this mistake. No, what EG, the mistake EG made actually was leaving the pool to the very end, and VG last picked it, which was even was. more surprising. Yeah, Magnus is the most broken hero I've seen conceptually throughout this main event. He wasn't as highly prioritized during the group stage, but the skewer horn toss combo it's almost impossible to go high ground, and then you're a hero that accelerates the farm of your teammates, Absolutely. making late game powerful. And the way you look at it, it can be like a longer range, easier, lower cooldown Batrider lasso, right? Because typically that's what Batrider was so broken for just in the past. His ability to just grab someone and bring him back to his team. But you had to build a blink dagger, you had to build a force staff, you had to do all of these things, and your cooldown was much higher. And while, yes, Magnus does need items to do it, he does have and a built-in farming ability. So it, it just seems really good. And this Magnus pick has really gone up in value with picking Phoenix, because RP is one of the best things you can do for defending Egg, right? I mean, picking Melina countered this Phoenix in that regard, but I would say he's still a very good hero in defending that. On top of that, Phoenix is very good versus Tiny because of Sunray, which is presented race damage. So what are the, the counters now? To the Magnus, because obviously Kyle mentioned the Omnibot used to be a counter, which is true. With the current Horn Toss playstyle, not the case anymore. So what do you do? I like Lena conceptually. It's not just the fact that she's range damage dealer, so okay. it's difficult to RP her alongside any of her teammates. But also, she represents a lot of pickoff. She plays off map. Any hero that utilizes Empower has to put themselves on the creep wave in danger in order to farm. So any hero that can separate or represent that solo kill threat or like a plus one, two hero kill threat, Tiny and Lena do that really well. Yeah, and I would say it's more so about just being conscious of the potential of a skewer, right? Because we've seen a lot of these teams get cocky in the enemy base and just making a little bit of mistakes in macro in that regard, just because we haven't seen that much Magnus during the groups. So as teams have been watching and respecting this hero, they will probably play around the threat better. The problem is it's just, Horn Toss is too good. It's it's instant. You blink and you do it. You set up for heroes there. So hopefully, you, I guess conceptually, something like a lion with a hex, like you see him blink and you instantly, you instantly disable, or maybe any kind of Yule's builder like a Void Spirit. We talked about Disruptor in one draft. I remember you mentioned them as well. Yeah. This is the Static Storm. For sure, but if you get horn tossed, you can't do it, right? So if you're just far away, any kind of instant disable or silence should be good. But more so than anything, it's just consciousness and respecting the hero's ability to turn the game for his team. That's tough because changing your playstyle is much harder than adapting your draft, right? Yeah, but these are players at the highest level, right? So it shouldn't be. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry. If I... we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, yesterday, nobody, nobody thought that OG would give it away twice, but they did. So. I'm curious if IG will go for something like a Faceless Void, 
just another way to protect the egg, but also we saw it being used against Tiny yesterday, and it worked really well. That's a very good point. I think Faisal's point is an interesting hero versus Tiny, just because well, once Tiny has BKB, he, he's a threat, right? Because he just walks in and starts hitting your entire team. But just Chronosphere is typically a counter for BKB. You drop it on him, and even if you can't kill him, you can at least buy time for your teammates to kill him. And not only does that combo with Supernova, it just will protect the egg on top of the Magnus, right? So typically when you look at a Void in this kind of game, you'd assume he's going to go on Lina, and Magnus will just RP the melee heroes, because it, it's too hard to catch a well-positioned Lina. But that's just a potential here. It, it also suits Fly Fly's playstyle, where he wants to carry the game, but with more of a teamfight-oriented hero like Spectre or Morphling, Void also within his pool, right? So it does suit the IG playstyle to tend to go for. In fact, that's been one of the criticisms of IG. I haven't really changed their style up. Is this a very IG draft right now we're seeing this, Jay? Yeah, uh, if you have two options when you have the Magnus. You have a hero like Faceless Void, another hero that's willing to do the AoE disable, or a hero that's going to draw a lot of attention to themselves by mm -hmm. being the first one that goes in the fight, and they elect to go for the Spirit type hero, the Ember Spirit, and I think it's the best matchup against Lina mid. None of the matchups feel great. We saw Vici pick Lesh against Lina yesterday and just get absolutely wrecked, even though the Lina was picked before it. The thing about Ember compared to all the other melee heroes is at least he can slide a fist dodge the light strike array mm -hmm. in the lane, making it so it's not as reliable for Lina to pressure him out. That's a very good point. And while Lina can bully the Ember, if he does play well and just use that slight to dodge the stun, that, that's really the way to do to go about it. But in response to that, I've seen a lot of Lina's just go Dragon Slave level one to deal with Ember. And how does the matchup change then? It's, you, you will hit him with your Dragon Slave, right? It's something you're not expecting. You can use it to secure range. It's not as scary as a potential stun, but it's something that people do in case he gets Flame Guard as well. Yeah. Even though I don't think level one Dragon Slave cancels Flame Guard anymore. No, Flame Guard's 110 yeah. now. At all. Well, there's yeah. virtually no spells in the mid lane that do cancel it, and that's why Ember Spirit's been seeing a lot more play in this tournament. You can reliably push out the first creep wave with your Flame Guard, and that's usually your weakest point before you get your bottle. But notice how their bands in VG, second round, were TA, Ursa, and Monkey King, three heroes that really get up in the face of the Lina, and that's the type of hero she doesn't want to deal with, and Ember Spirit's probably the best candidate left. And there's the line that BSJ was talking about in the beginning of the draft, how he expects it to be a contested hero, and how we brought it up theoretically as a response to the Magnus, right? So if this line is on his game and this Magnus blinks in, if he's in range, he should be able to stop the scare back with the Hex. Yeah, if he has vision of the mag before he blinks, you can cue the Hex outside of range of the mag, and the second the mag blinks in, it will Hex him before the Horn Talus goes off. Mm -hmm. And typically, I think now that Magnus has become such a threat in this TI meta, these heroes that can inherently provide vision for the team, like Monkey King and Beastmaster, should go up in value because the way that you play in something like Magnus now would be to just take the fight on your vision so that no one gets caught off guard yep. in your team. I was going to say this Doom pick's pretty sick because yes. a lot of the carries that are good against Tiny are the ones like Faces Void that like to take long, sustained fights, can somehow satanic or wear off your initial burst. And the long fight, being the counter to Tiny, is the exact way for Doom when he flourishes, right? It's also Old Eleven's Doom, mm -hmm. often called, sure. Old Eleven often called the core of this team. And Old Eleven also, one of the most farming offlaners, you get him a hero with inherent uh, gold acquisition. What else would you ask? I mean, we have seen very little Old Eleven Doom because it usually actually gets banned. Yeah, he will Most be the number target. one net worth 15 minutes. Yeah, he, he will be. He's the true carry right now. And we've seen that in groups. When teams play against Vici, they actually target ban most of Old Eleven's yes. heroes. So the way that Vici approached drafting was that they just tried to first phase his heroes, but they actually changed that up during main stage. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just like Old Eleven's confident. Target ban my heroes, I can play whatever you need me to play. So that's pretty cool to see. But another thing that I wanted to point out about Doom is just that if you look at the three heroes on IG right now, none of them really like to build four staff. I guess the utility Magnus can, but that's not the build you go for these days. So typically when a core on your team gets doomed, you want your supports to kite him away. So he just needs to be pushed back away, right? And Phoenix, not a four staff fire. So that, that's something cool that they have going for them. Yep. All right, we're gonna see now the Wraith King. A, a couple of teams have decided on the Wraith King as a pretty valuable Doom counter. We've seen some success for, with it for, I think, with LGD that run in the group stages a couple of times against Doom. What do you think of this hero right now, BSJ? Uh, most notably, I look at his skeletons as his way of farming, so I okay. look at it also as his way to like win the lane and take control of possibly con pressuring the map in regards to the tower, the T1 that's in his lane, and they don't have any way to deal with that in the offlane duel. You have the Lion plus 
plus the Doom. So I think his start will be really good on top of the fact that he is conceptually good against Doombringer as the game goes on. I think this is the only hero in the pool that would have taken long fights and still doesn't mind getting doomed. Yep. So I, I like the pick a lot now that I'm thinking it out loud. But the concern for this is, well, yes, Wraith King is a Doom counter. Now Ember Spirit's just going to be the, the, the Doom the magnet, doom. right? So you're kind of worried about that because you don't really want to Doom this Wraith King. And if you look at Beachy's draft, outside of the Doom, Lena and Tiny are always going to be ready to fight, right? They're low cooldown heroes, so it might not be the best game in theory for the Wraith King, but it definitely has merits here for all the reasons that Brian mentioned. Yeah, Ember can never go in first, and I think they realized that the second they saw the Lion Doom. He can't possibly react to Hex and to Doom, so now they needed a hero that does go in first. And the Wraith King, the entire momentum of IG will be lost if he dies once or twice in the mid game with his ultimate on cooldown. As Mira said, they will be able to punish that with their low cooldown lineup. So I, we saw yesterday uh, 23 Savage overextend a little bit on the Wraith King against Vici, uh, and so we have to be careful of that happening again. One of my questions, though, to Mira as well, is yesterday you spoke about why you were not the biggest fan of the Magnus Wraith King. Could you explain that again to the audience? Yeah, so just, it's not that it's bad in any way. It's just that typically when you want a core hero to take advantage of Empower, it's something like, something with inherently high attack speed, so typically an Agi hero, or something with some kind of mechanism to make them go from camp to camp faster, right? So it's like a Faceless Void or an Anti-Mage or a PA, but Wraith King does benefit greatly from the Empower. It's just that when I think about, when I think about the kind of carries you want hitting someone in RP, Wraith King doesn't come to mind as the best one, but it's still, it's still pretty good, you know? It's just those two heroes together, it's fine. There are better options. Yeah, there are better options, but in this game, they do need a hero that goes in first, and you want your carry to be the one doing that in this patch. So he actually was just the best pick here, I would say. You were raving about this hero <laughs> behind the scenes. Hero. I love oh, this oh. hero. So, uh, well, I'm the host, but I'm going to answer this, because Bro Brewmaster <laughs> is the hero that just gets rid of one person in the fight, right? So he's great against heroes like Tide. He's great against heroes like Wraithing, for example. Heroes that you can't kill immediately or that have two lives for whatever reason. He's fantastic at eliminating them. and. We have seen, I actually think this might be a PYW Brewmaster. We have seen that a couple of times, but uh, it's a very interesting pickup here as a five. You have the AoE Dispel for the Ember Shield as well as yes. the Empower. Both of those can be removed by the Brewmaster's ult. And this Clockwork, he's going to have a large weight on his shoulders because none of these melee bruisers, uh, the cores on the side of Vichy, can deal with the clogs. But just about this brew really quick, this has been a very popular support pick in China, and they just played it on the Vessel, right? And then it kind of fell out of favor because People figure it out, you just dispel it. But they don't really have any dispels for this build here. And outside of the eight second cyclone, which is absurd in winning fights, it, it seems like a really creative hero and I can see it fitting this draft very well. Originally North American, by the way, was four Zoomers who first innovated this five Let's go. as well. Yeah, a little Red bit of panda. fear and spirit, baby. <laughs> Red Panda. Yeah, Red Panda was doing it a Shout little bit out after. Red Panda RNG, we never forgot you, man. <laughs> well, as the draft ends, I just like to uh, hear the game plan, BSJ, I don't get a last word, so what are we looking out for here? Uh, I'd say the game plan for IG is to have map momentum coming out of the lanes. It will be led by the Wraith King with it being like the lanes being pushed with the connection of the Clockwork as well as the Ember. They're probably going to leave the Phoenix to kind of do his own thing on the map. While on the other hand, Vici will be looking to shut down this momentum just once and then sit back and farm mm -hmm. until their doom is basically five or six slotted. Because once he has the refresher, Shiva's BKB, I have a hard time believing IG can take it. Agreed. It seems like IG have to play the tempo game here. Uh, any oh, no, actually, we're ready. We're ready now to start the game. As we're going in, we're first going to get a quick tidbit of information. Uh, Sir Action Slacks is going to be interviewing IG's coach, Super. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we'll make this quick. The game has started. Brewmaster, surprising last pick. Are you ready for it? I think their lineup is extremely greedy. I think it's really easy for us. All right, well, we'll see if it is. Let's get into that game with our beautiful casters. Oh, thank you so much, Slacks. And yes, indeed, Trent, we are here. We are ready for this matchup as the game has already gotten underway. That last pick, Brewmaster, mm. he feels like it's greedy. They're ready for it. What do you think? I don't know. It sounds like he's saying easy game. That's what I just <laughs> heard. So it's, it's been very popular on the main stage the past couple of days. But I love the confidence coming up there from Super. Just saying, too greedy, right? You guys see this all the time in your games. 
ladies and gents at home, you've played some Dota, you felt this pain before. Why is everyone picking stuff that needs so much gold on my team? But DY, he's prepared to make the sacrifices here on this Brewmaster. True enough. And it's interesting too, right? We were looking at the drafts and the last four bands all felt like they were targeted at these like save type heroes and then also dispels, which is what they're going to be getting out of that Brewmaster hopefully. But there are a lot of other heroes in this draft. What do you think about the rest of them? The the Wraith King, obviously great against mm -hmm, the Doom, mm -hmm. but also kind of a hero that's been like, man, never feeling great about it. Yeah, yeah, no. no and no, speaking no. of which, oh my god, already right off the bat, in some trouble, Flyfly Fly, trying to get out of there, but won't happen. Old Eleven, drawn for his blood. Well, well said. I mean, clearly a hero that's having some some problems here in the in the main event for sure. And uh, well, of course, uh, you know, you can hear some some dancing there. That's PYW on that lion. Uh, the hero that was Definitely talked about a lot coming to this. Like, oh, yeah, let it go there, PYW. Uh, who, who was going to get it, right? That was the question. And so what I think is interesting is, like, Kaka, of course, renowned for his line. He's been playing that Clockwork, which is a hero that uh, I would say has been looking fantastic, probably mostly from DJ, probably one of the most standout performances so far in the tournament with that uh, earlier on here in the main event. And so you would think that Kaka has an extremely good idea of how he can deal with this line in the game, right? And I see Vision from the Clockwork trying to spot this line before the fights. And as well as if you just stick on that line, you really ruin his game. Right, it's going to be up to definitely the line keep himself out of that vision, make sure that he dodges away from the fights whenever things go on that way. And, you know, of course, PYW well known for his uh, solid support place. So we'll see how that one goes. Is DY going to try and make this move over to connect the waves and does manage to get it? So no free pull off there by Kaka. JT still able to at least uh, play over here. And DY, you have to be a little careful. Right, versus the Clockwork, might help to uh, get that movement speed sooner rather than later on the Brewmaster, but uh, already has the Drunken Brawler, so that's uh, his tool uh, right now to deal with this. It is still a lot of pressure. Super yeah. annoying to just get Battery Assault and ran down a little bit there, and Poyo gonna move in, try and get himself a little bit of extra farm. They connected it up and actually brings down Ollie down bottom. Quick and easy on the rundown kill. Wow, they've really been putting on the pressure there with the stun suit, just like slowly burning them piece by piece down on that Phoenix. And I mean, it's not the first blood kill, but still a bit painful. Of course, you, you do get to play Courier whenever you die early, so it'll be coming back with the Chainmail. And so that same harass can be much weaker versus Flyfly now with the early armor there. It'll be good to watch. You know, it's interesting. We haven't really talked about it all that much yet, but this mid lane matchup, we're going to see Emo versus Ori. Going into this tournament, I would have said Emo 100%, but like the last couple of days, Ori has really stepped up his game. I've been super impressed with his play. Yeah, there's no doubt he was uh, the big question mark, not so much Emo uh, in, <laughs> in this lineup right now. Trying to figure out like, okay, where's Ori been? Like, yeah. they're, they're winning some games and stuff, but it felt like he was sort of struggling and then coming to the main event, you really need that clutch factor coming in your mid lane and he has stepped it up. And I feel like he's at the point now where I, I want any more out of his teammates too. Like they, yeah. he's done his part. I, I really feel like his gameplay's improved so much that if the, the allies, the Hez, can do that similarly, BG can go very far. Well, and so far this bottom lane doing a lot. Old 11 and PYW already putting some of that pressure on the fly fly on this race king. You can see they're not letting him down. Even with that chain mail, they're keeping the right clicks in and also killing off the courier. Very the nice going stuff great. here. Top lane though. Going a little bit now, trying to take down Kaka, get a couple more of those punches in, but the battery assault turnaround, mm -hmm. not able to catch him in the cogs. Tree in there, got some separation. Man, so much action all over this map here. And uh, yeah, of course, the mid lane, we haven't really discussed this that much uh, in terms of the matchup, but Lena right now for like, doesn't really lose many lanes, of course. And so, uh, Ori, you're expecting to start stepping up here pretty soon as you hit the level four. And probably going to see Emo just playing a little bit less, like actually in the lane itself. Right. Uh, I, I doubt we're going to see any rotations for the kills. If there is, though, Kaka, you know, maybe he finds that lucky angle where he comes in with the cogs, pushes Ori back into the river. But uh, they have a ward to help protect against that. that. That will be expiring pretty soon from Vici. You can see the root comes out there from Emo and trading hits again <laughs> to make sure he gets that. You really wanted that range creep. I mean, uh, Emo's going in on this now with a lot of HP. The fairy fire comes out, needs to break the flame guard. Is it going to be enough living on nothing, Ori? About 10 HP right there. Oh, PYW. Oh, moves over to the side. Can get a couple right hit clicks? Real hard. This could be pretty good, but <laughs> Phoenix moves into position, and that's going to stop the pressure. Still, uh, good aggro from Emo. Yeah, I mean, creeps are strong, but they're not that strong, unfortunately, to, yeah. to help with PYW there. But rotating in, and unfortunately, though, we also had the rotation coming from Kaka. He guarded that water in up top, so Emo's going to be very happy with the current situation, forcing the full walk back there from Ori. We'll have to TP back in. 
And, uh, you know, you saw early in that top lane, though, where DY is actually, like, trying to fight back with some harass. It, it's not one of these uh, these combos that you would expect with the Brewmaster, right? You, you don't have the, uh, the the Cinder Brew into, like, a cheap spell that's really easy to toss out. You, you don't right. have the big mana pool. We see, like, Venge Brew, so you can just, like, Wave of Terror, activate and everything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Poyo comes over to help out, but that, that's I mean, costly. This is still going to be a good kill if they can get it. Can they finish him off? Oh, the slowdown comes from the Shockwave! And then the salve up afterwards, able to get out Akaka. And Poyo still holding the wave through all that at the very least, so... We'll just go right back to farming while uh, dishing out some damage, but nice salve there from Kaka. <laughs> also just going to get in there and make sure he has the block off there too, so... No stacks for you, Vici. Yeah, nothing given for free, that's for sure. It's down bottom, you can see the pressure is going to be mounted yet again. They got this side pull off by Vici and now going to connect the wave to it. And it's just, it's really hard for Flyfly to walk in there. Every single time they keep on getting that pull off, it's just a couple of creeps that he ends up losing. Right now, level four on the Wraith game. As TP back home, should be able to come back out with the remnant afterwards. As GoW has to back away. Ollie doing some good damage. Trying to secure the six minute rune, but with Emo coming over, this might just be a freebie. As they move on in, LSA won't keep PYW alive. Emo ready to keep that pressure on. And up top, they also find the kill on the JT. Oh, that one was a long time coming too. Poyo really putting the pressure on the JT as much as he could and sort of just like waiting for that moment where and when you throw so much harass at a point, the mag is just going to like keep playing in the lane, right? And yeah. just be like, yeah, you keep lowering me, but you're never going for the actual kill. And so that's all basically a bunch of conditioning there um, for Poyo before they actually bring over the help from DY for the Ooh, secure. Nice. So very well done there. Also gets a D ward inside his own jungle there. It looks like Kaka is placed down, so... Solid start here for the five brew. I, well, I say that, you know, and now he's being ganked by Emo, so yeah, maybe not the... so solid. I mean, it's hard to take him down. He's got a lot of HP on this Brewmaster, one of the reasons people like him. And in fact, with the rotation over from the Lion, they're able to get TY out. So and not bad. Yeah, the lack of boots there on Kaka as well, right? Couldn't keep up with the battery assault. And uh, despite being a, just a wind blade, he's already at 330 for the Panda. Currently the lowest net worth on him, but getting some levels here and there as Poyo already up to level six, has those treads done. Looks like we're trying to get into that Echo Saber, and also we're seeing JT get into that Helm of the Dominator that's become so popular. Mm -hmm. God, this hero just feels so insane every time we watch it. I, I love the players that really utilize that Helm of the Dominator to the full extent, too. And uh, with, with this idea of IG1 to play pretty fast this game, it can be an amazing tool. Down bottom. Going on to old 11, looking for the rundown. Do they have enough for the kill, though? Don't think so. 1100 HP and a soul ring. This guy's strong. Yeah, phase boots too, working towards that Midas. And uh, as the panel mentioned, Old Eleven looking to be the richest already there. Yeah. Uh, up by a significant margin uh, compared to his own teammate on the Tiny. That is uh, not easy to slow Doom down, particularly when he gets a good start like he saw there, right into the first blood. PYW looking for the stun to open this one up on Akaka, but there isn't clean opening, so we'll just hang out there as Emo farming very low in the jungle and it's going to TP back home to regen. But yeah, those early rotations and it looks like now Beachy feeling comfortable just sitting back in their lanes and not really doing that much to mix, mix things up at least. They're getting farmed on all their heroes. They've read the forecast, you know. They know the, the storm is coming from IG. That is okay. most certainly the plan, right? But uh, there's a few things they want to check off first. They want to get Kaka, the level 6. Uh, they want to get that helm fully finished up there on JT and then probably smoke with the creep, go over some kills, and then start threatening some towers. Flyfly wants to be activated early in this game too, going for that armlet build, so... Uh, expect the uh, the pressure to come here soon as PYW is smoking in here probably just a, a warding mission uh, as you want to try and scout out where they want to set up this smoke right and so wards deep in your enemy territory early on even if you don't want to get aggressive they're so good at spotting uh, of course we always talk about the courier, courier rotations but just for people who kind of want to like back up group up and smoke and they're actually just going to transfer the smoke right to the mid lane but Kaka goes left when he hoped he would go right well, oh, I might be the bigger back. one to go for. Walks in, gets the Earth Spike to open. Follow up, no, there's TPs coming in. Now they have to be careful on Beachy, and in fact, UIW might just end up falling here as Emo and Ollie move into position and can't get that denied by the neutral camp. 
Not the play they were looking for there on side of each. They finally get uh, some aggression going, gets turned around on them. So excellent stuff there for IG considering where this game was going. Yeah, that's a bold play. And then pretty deep, able to trade over aggro to the creeps, but still caught in these cogs at all 11. He's just going to fall. Most net worth in the game gets dropped by Kaka. Yo, Flyfly was bluffing there too. He'd been yeah. holding the point for so long, but he'd actually spent it. He did not have one left for the ulti. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would have been a huge kill if they could have made it. I mean, at the same time, though, you see all these cores from Beachy still incredibly farmed. So giving up kills like that, it's got to hurt. Three to three, 10 minutes in. And Emo looking for a rune, wants to get active here with this one if he can make it happen. But DY going to cover the angle. It's an arcane. And looks like they're able to get it onto Ori. No deny coming out from that Helmet of Dominator creep. Yeah, Seder tried its best there, but not going to find it. But there it is, the lovely Tome going to be coming out here. So this is where your Brewmaster is going to have the level 6, can utilize that Primal Spit. And it, it can be tough. Uh, it's it's a two-minute cooldown, so you really don't want to waste it on a bad fight because it feels like that's sort of your entire toolkit when you play the 5 Brewmaster. Yeah, that's pretty much everything that he's going to be picked for in this game. Mm -hmm. um, granted, there's been some times where he's like survived a gank that others might not have, but you know, it needs to be more than a glorified creep at this point in the game. Yeah, I think there's some, some serious issues from this game too. So benefits, he has the AoE dispel. That's right. pretty sweet versus like the Ember versus the Empower. Def definitely a helpful tool. The Tornado to just like toss up maybe the Phoenix or the Mag. One of these big playmakers, even just a Clockwork. Just remove True. someone from the engagement, right? Uh, let you focus on other heroes. But... Uh, I see, like, slight and power later on. When you're support brew, you're not getting a lot of levels. Yeah. Which means your brewmaster pandas, they're, they're, they're not getting very tanky. No, he's going to so, get torn up. Yeah, slight and power, they could just die. And we'll see if he can get in towards some of those levels later on. But right now, at the very least, JT is having a wonderful time uh, trying to catch up a little bit on this mag playing with the Helm of the Dominator creep. No real pressure being expended onto him, so it feels like he's kind of got a free path towards that Blink Dagger. As Old Eleven and DY down bottom. Don't really want to go, but there's multiple heroes from IG that are showing up here as well. And the smoke up from the Phoenix and the Clockwork. This is really tough to deal with because it is a Wraith King, right? You don't want to use Doom. You don't want to use Brew Split uh, since he has the ulti on the reincarnation, right? You, you always have to be considering that. I don't want to trade either of those spells for reincarnation, mm. so... Even just being in this part of the map feels really bad, I would say, for DY. But he also has to be there defensively, too, because he doesn't want his uh, big pinata of a Doom to go down to give away some of that big gold bounty that you're able to gain on the hero. They just got this D ward here up on this high ground. Uh, IG put a ward over there, and it was taken away by Vici. And then they also miss on the sentry. So IG a little bit working blind, and well, Kaka moves into position. Hookshot afterwards. He's going to maybe be able to get that ulti off. Needs to get it, but the battery salt interrupting too much. He eventually finds it. Supernova down, LSA afterwards. Vici bring down that oh, egg, awesome. and now the lift up on the mag. He wasn't able to get the RP off. The turnaround, Vici Gaming takedown three. All right, that was nice. That, that's like the dream fight for a Brewmaster it player, was so right? so good. You absorb so much damage, so much attention for the team, and then you still get the ulti off, and then catching that uh, throw up on the Magnus of the mid uh, skewer. Woo! DY. Showing some chops here on the five brew. Oh, the draft, maybe not looking so greedy anymore. It's looking pretty good here. Greed is good. That's true. I think that's a voice line. 4K gold up right now on Vici. Looking easy as pie, and IG, they're just gonna need to make some moves eventually. It's just the hero's a little bit static at the moment, and Vici ready to go. Old 11 moves into position. Fly Fly turns on him, though. LSA as they rotate in from Ori. Now trying to get the right clicks in for the kill. The hex is out. Figure of death done. Emo Fly Fly. I mean, he's hitting pretty hard. They take down two and now looking for more. Ori did you fight off more than you can chew. Root now, the walk back in from Fly Fly with this armlet, hoping to kill off DY, but he misses once, tries to get the secondary one. The turn now, Fly Fly goes down, but they brought in the back. JT, he still has RP, connects on the both. Bring him on down. The instant hit back from IG in the top lane. A little bit bold there to start out, but they drag that fight out, those longer engagements, right? Trying to, to make a play out of that with the Wraith King and then Emo coming through on that Ember. Excellent stuff there. And uh, the final stamp there from JT as well. 
Damn. Easy tower take into the enemy jungle and, and, and much needed with how this game was getting there, right? Like, O11, of course, that, that was even his blink reveal for it to, to look like that. Not a great sign. I, it's just, I mean, it's one of those moments where on the big stage you feel so strong, you're mm -hmm. looking like things are going to go great. They got also the full assassin mixed in there, taking away the regen from the Doom, and then in the end, they come in and clean up on IG, and now a hook shot back behind enemy lines, finding PYW dead. That's my hero. Unreal. You give that back. That's, that's my luck. <laughs> Kaka definitely knows how to make Lion suffer. Yeah. That will be the game for them. Now, all 11 despite revealing the blink, obviously didn't actually use the Doom. So there could be some hesitation here for IG moving forward. But they say, like, go ahead. Like, eventually, we need to force out these big ultis. We don't have the RP right now. You guys want to, like, come and try and defend? Let's see what you got. And they're not going to do it. For the moment, at least, Vichy. I'm a little bit hesitant about that move potential in this Tier 2 tower. Being pressured, no response yet. But as oh, they man. move out with DY, oh, yo going to be the back out. The flare is just so good versus both the Lion and the Brewmaster, particularly this Brewmaster who probably not going to get a blink. If he does, it is a very long ways away. So if you can just spot him like in a tree line like that. His only initiation is like preemptive ulting, hmm. you know, and it, it's just so easy to back away in those situations. Man, this Fly Fly build is pretty cool too. Going after the armlet into Deso. Now, the only problem is this, this actually is a little bit scary if he gets doomed with that armlet on. It's going to start losing a ton of HP super quick. Just, just keep swinging. That's, yeah. that's all. <laughs> that's all you can do. <laughs> It'll be fine. Well, I think the best thing to me is that they just get objectives, right? Like, whenever you have an Ember on your team, you know, that, that's a mid that doesn't really help in that situation. Right. Meg, eh, he's got some hits too, sure. But uh, with, with a Deso on a Wraith King, I mean, you're getting Roche, you're getting Towers, and, and that's what they're trying to do right now. They want, they want to punish and, and find as many objectives in the, as they can in these times when VG just don't want to engage. Oh, that does feel to be right now. Shadow Blade coming out on Poyo. And for IG, the map is looking very clear. Uh, obviously, that like movement in towards the top tier two tower could be good with a lot of vision that they have around that area. Yeah. But you also are, sort of have a window here before PYW gets Blink Dagger where you can maybe make some more stuff happen. I mean, VG have a very clear game plan. Like, they, they've just put some wards, like, near their entrances to their jungle. They're just camping on these high grounds. They're hanging out near these wards. They're watching for smoke pops. They, they know that IG are coming. Yeah. Oh, and now Ollie gets a D ward there, too. Very nicely done. Yeah, this is a scary time now. They, they get that deny in the tower. That gives Lion enough gold for the Blink Dagger. He's flying it out right now on PYW. And you're also getting closer to these BKBs. Yeah, but that Roche, I mean, it's too fast to the death, so it's just gone. Oh, DY, really? He's going in. There's a lot of heroes here. Supernova down. Did you see that? That was a Bruling. Yeah, he did not last that long. It was gone. Just instantly. The, the, this split is not going to be able to stop this Roche from happening. So Aegis on the ground. Oh, no. Hello? Team? 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 What? Team? This is this is this is an important match. Team, there's an Aegis on the ground. It's just sitting in there. I, uh, nobody got it. All right, now the cheese. I can oh understand. Oh my God, IG, somebody wait, 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 go no, no, pick no, no. up the Aegis. Kaka's Kaka. gone. He's walking back in. I think. Do oh they God, not they know? They actually don't they know. They don't know. I mean, who? Oh it? my God, they don't know. The Aegis is still on the ground. Oh, oh no! no. He didn't get the Aegis. What? Are you kidding me? Just like that, it happened! Haha, uh -huh, says Ori. Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, well, never in my listen, life, Trent. Listen, it's fine, it's fine. They have a Wraith King. He has an Aegis. It's fine. It's one of the abilities. He has reincarnation. They, You know what? This is just a move saying we don't need it, you know? <laughs> So what is if I swagger, says Wraith King? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's fine. Look, they're going to win. They don't need it, all right? Okay. They're just still going to march your buildings. They're giving them a chance. Oh, yo, going to get stunned now. And IG, LSA comes out. They back away. Finds a kill here, possibly bringing him down low. Not quite dead. They brought down Poyo, but everybody from IG is still surviving. Now, afterwards, they managed to find the stun. Good amount of damage there on oh. Akaka. He falls down. Oh, Did uh -oh. IG stick around a bit too long? Uh -oh. They lost the Aegis and now potentially oh, no. going to lose this fight. RP oh. on the Tuba. Where's the follow-up damage? They don't have it. JT, nowhere left to go. 
You know what? Oh my that god! That was a lot better with an Aegis. You're not wrong, Trent. You are not wrong. As old 11 tries to run down Emo, it's going to be the chase on the Phoenix. Ollie caught, gets the dive away. How do you mentally recover from that? Game two. Oh, that's, man. Uh, you know, that's, that's a very tough one to reset. That's going to take a lot of discussions in the booth and just, it's fine, it's fine, it's in the past, it's done. You know, write a little note, take Aegis next time. That's pretty much all you can do. Uh, that really hurts. It hurts in every Dota game to, uh, you know, have your Aegis snatched or yeah. accidentally deny it. But in this one in particular, when you're trying to play at such a fast tempo and really trying to get as much as you can out of the first 30 minutes of the game, that, that one's really painful to watch. Well, we're going to have to move on as well as this game is continuing to be played out and it's a 3,000 gold lead now for Vici. DY going to be wrapped around on by Kaka. There's the hook shot in. And it looks like they'll be able to, oh no, to split out. The turnaround, Emo shows up as well. Needs to get out with at least one of these Panda Invis one away. And with that, DY dodges the game. Interesting tactic. I mean, utilizing the split for essentially a, a free lane push, right? Like, yeah. it, it's pretty difficult to get all the pandas or to just like chase down the, the Earth Panda, if that's going to be your strategy. Uh, maybe get into some earlier farm and some other items here. Hoping for a, a potential force staff to help over the clockwork as well. DD now on Ori. And they're going to pressure this bottom tier two tower, but there is a glyph out. An IG. We'll see if they come to defend this or not. But with it fully surrounded, mm. it feels unlikely. And and Doom has an Aegis, so you know. That's true. Nice. Still another two minutes left on that one. Top lane. Ori, they find Ollie. Old 11. And Ori combined together for the kill. Do you have to shot after oh, Back towards so. mid lane. DY caught again. No split this time. And they will be able to kill off the panda. So IG trying to pull things back together yes, a little bit. Kaga's rallying the troops, and this is a great hero to be on to do it because it, it can be very difficult from the support role five or four to get these great initiations, but that's one thing that's so important about how Kaka plays the lion. I feel like he goes for those initial jumps more than other lion players. All lions, like, sure, you go for the hex on, like, the storm or the ember or something, but he's willing to jump on anyone yeah. when he plays that hero. And so putting him onto a clockwork, it, it gives him even more power in that same, same role without the need for as many items. True. Uh, so much of that tempo that can just be set by support position. It's incredibly useful in these games and not a huge loss if it ends up dying when there's an overextension. A Lincoln Sphere done for Ember now, but the smoke up comes. Everybody with the exception of Phoenix. Mm. Emo, who does he find? Old well, Eleven's there. He has a he has an Aegis. That's true. Oh my god, are they gonna kill him with the Aegis? Hook stump afterwards. Fly fly jumps no, the back fly, finds Ori. That's not a bad one. But he gets the BKB in the walk away. Emo, slow down, killing him dead. He's coming back though. Round two and Vici, they're all, all right. in the area. The supernova's down. Do they want to fight this? Well, BKB in the runaway. Old Eleven stun chase then. Eventually uh, RP to kill. IG, they're back. They need that, right? Again, just mentality-wise, finding that kill. Maybe not the best part of the map, but and so close to getting Ori, too. That would have been huge. They actually missed the hook shot, unfortunately, there uh, from Kaga for the follow-up. So not able to get the full kill done. But uh, into the tower they go, right? This is still a Raid King with Deso. He has the blink. He also has the uh, the Brigand's Blade, too, which, oh, yeah. uh, you know, a couple swings on some of these heroes, you're just going to get melted. Poyo. Going to pressure out these side lanes. And again, everything to try and slow down this timing that's coming from IG. Kaka's on him again here. Yeah. Got him in vision. DY caught. Does he use the split this time or giving up his life as... Oh, wait. Got pushed out to the other side. Nah, he's dead. The best part is that was even without the hook shot. Yeah. He just flared and then four staffs his way in there too. Did leave a pretty sneaky ward behind there from DY though. See if that'll help them later on some potential ganks. And uh, you know who we haven't seen much of this game is uh, Poyo, yep. That's true. And one, one, and two. Just kind of hanging out this game. Still has the, the max BKB. I feel like uh, he might be ready to party. Well, Vici. They're smoked up now as four without DY. And they want to make a fight happen. Who do they get? Flyfly's there. Ooh, blinks away. Instead, they run to Ollie. 
Everybody piling on, and PYW found the Wraith King afterwards. LSA connects. Or staff trying to keep him alive. Kaka in there as well. But one more hit comes in, and they manage to find the kill. Can they do round two of this one? JG trying to buy a little bit of space for his team, but afterwards the Avalanche toss comes out, finger dead. IG losing hero after hero. They keep fly by life for now, but DY moves into position. He Kaka just respawned. Gets the cogs push back for the moment. DY still looking for the chase, and ooh, thought about going for more. A call call. Yeah, very interesting there from Vici, right? Smoking out there while the Brewmaster was still dead, so perhaps catching him a little bit off guard and uh, also finding a fight before the RP was ready. The Horn Toss was there, but JT couldn't quite figure out the right play for it in that moment. And that will send Vici back, but the main goal that they got, I suppose, would have been uh, the Reincarnation. Unfortunately for them, it is level 18 on the Wraith King, so back to just that minute cooldown. Much harder to punish at this point in the game. They are at least able to uh, stay pretty far out there on the map. They took back over the outpost. It's going to be reclaimed by IG before that 25 minute mark. But still you can see this lead growing for Vici as the game goes on. This is just what Doom does. Though there is still a very farmed Wraith King. A how do you feel each team is kind of feeling about the state of the game right now? I think for IG it's uh I, I would guess hollow would be the word where okay. like you're still playing but it it's got to be itching in the back of your head, just like, oh, we should be so much further up right now. Like, right. It, it's so hard to put that away and just, like, pack it up and move on. Uh, but all they can do is uh, try and keep going for these plays and try and keep uh, this tempo moving forward for them. Uh, the, the next big items, probably, they're, they're just hoping for, like, they have the uh, the Lincolns, the Maelstrom on this Ember, so should be more confident jumping into these fights, watching out for that Doom. Oh, it gets the split off there. A couple other heroes in the area, but you'd have to assume the DY is just going to try and get out of here with these pandas. Earth one running. They got eyes on him, though. A slow, steady run down. Lift up afterwards from the Storm Panda, and I think that DY's teammates are going to leave him for death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're new to Brewmaster, you always respawn on the Earth Panda if it's still alive before the Agnums comes out. We won't, we won't get into that. But uh, so they can basically just hunt that one down and guarantee they'll catch him. Sometimes you'll see them kind of leave it alive for a bit because they don't want to kill the Earth Panda and thus transfer the ownership to the next Panda right. uh, and then miss out on the kill when the Brewmaster leaves the ulti form. Well, try two here. I have a feeling IG are going to pick it up this time. I, I think so. I think <laughs> they should just leave it just for a second, you know? Oh, he's got it. Emo's ready. Aegis, no. Shard, good to go. Mentally, they could recover if they had have just left it, though. That's no, true. That, that would really show something. But uh, no, they're, they're back in the game. All right, everything's fine this time. Emo heads down the bottom. They're going to grab a gem onto Ollie. Something that's becoming more and more Radiant common in uh, in the internationals. Ooh. We move forward as these uh, are these earlier gems, just to get get rid of this vision that your Emo. opponent's going to have on your side of the map. Lincoln is ready, and that's going to be enough to stop Vici from going for the big jump and instead fly fly. Going to become visible right away. Avalanche toss from Poyo backs out for staff. And a little bit of separation there. Dy is behind him. Going to pop that BKB and run away. Shadow blades out. They need JT here for this play to work. He's trying to catch up. DY doesn't have ulti for another 20. So they'll find themselves another kill oh, on JT. the support brew. He's following the creeps. Tries to get him. Old 11 could blink away. And they won't quite be able to catch him there. Nicely done. Yeah, pretty much a 50-50 at that point. They could have gotten him. And then look what Ori does. TP to the top lane and pushes in the tower. Nice play there. Oh, that egg. That, that could have actually turned into something, but unfortunately for them, the one hero they need, right? Like, when that egg forces the entire enemy team to just run away, yeah. you're hoping JT's there in time, right? Because right. he can get the pierce to the BKB. He can get whatever target they want, draw it back towards the egg, and guarantee the pickoff for the team. Only Ori. getting DY, not what they wanted. Kaka, again, doing a great job of trying to catch this Lina. Going to TP away afterwards. That's enough. Oh, no! Wasn't long enough on that BKB. TP too late, and Ori caught and killed Kaka. Pulling his team back. And that is why you stay. Yeah. Every time, right, as the support. You double check, you click on there just to make sure. Yeah, surprising you get caught there, though. Rare uh, misplay on the main stage when it comes to the BKB TPs. Finally get the punish. I guess he just thought that there was a chance that JT was nearby or something and wanted to get that little separation first, but mm -hmm. ends up getting punished for it. This is now a smoke up again from IG as they're going to run down that mid lane. Aegis in hand for another three minutes. They want to get active. Looking for an opening with that horn toss. 
fly, fly, eat away, ward down, jump right at the start. Old oh, 11's there, they're, they're gonna go split. for the split. And gonna get that lift up. Emo, afterwards, DD could use it to spell. Look at JT though. Done. Ava toss, dead. Kaka gone. Fly fly there afterwards. They miss on the horn toss. PKB is out. Jump forward, old 11. Looking for a target. Wants to get him. Got him. Done. Double kill for Poyo Yo. DY afterwards. They get a great earth spike as the respawn happens for Fly Fly. Emo still alive here. What else do they have left in the tank? They don't have Doom available, but IG gonna respect the high ground defense. Oh, they're trying so hard here from IG just to get that one mistake from Vici and get the punish for the Magnus, but unable to find it. A strong high ground defense here, and I'm sure you still have Aegis for another two minutes. Maybe you can go once again, but every time that misses, the game just gets harder and harder for IG, and, and Vici just gained more and more confidence. And Ori, in the meantime, looking to find somebody on the bottom side that steps just a bit too far out. Needs the help there from PYW, running in the smoke too, just to get through this Lincolns. And... All right, freehand LSA. There it oh, is, starts it off, and there's the pop. Can they get the kill? Yes, indeed. Age just down, do they have a round two now? It's coming back out, fire running about to expire. Oh, he gets away at the last second. It was about to expire there. Very close, but oh, oh, good. All right, so and now main issue though, of course, don't have the Aegis for continuing to push the high ground. They, uh, I guess, do have reincarnation though, right? That's uh, true. So can keep pressuring that tower just with the Wraith King here, but they're actually going to try and find their opponents in the river. Counterplay there. He's blink and force after though. This is a hard grab. They're like first. A little bit separated. Who do they find? Ichi supports backing away. PYW walks back into the flare vision. And DY, ooh, just barely outside of it. How many times in this game, you know? Old 11 getting away, now DY there too. IG been chasing ghosts for a lot of this one, and then you just have Hero staying on their side of the map and pushing out waves like Poyo in the bottom right now. He's keeping that one pressured, yeah. Every single time one of these does not connect by IG when they make the big five-man smoke rotations. Something else falls apart there. I mean, we can talk about the game, like, looking hard and stuff going late uh, for IG, which it definitely does, but they also have some heroes that can still make the turning plays, right? That's in true. particular, that Magnus. So. Yeah, that's the biggest one. Yes, you'd rather win early and everything, but they're not completely doomed here. Blink away. Doom. DKB out. Do they have enough to bring him down? The rest of the heroes wrapping around. Old 11 tries to back out, but it won't happen. IG now looking for a bit more, but they won't be able to find it. In fact, it's just going to be a lift up for the moment. But 60 seconds, no doom. This is a huge window for IG here. Yep. Buyback, okay. how much is it away? 400 gold. And they still have some creeps with them here, too. So they have to go for the glyph. They're going to counter glyph as well. Try and keep this creep up as long as they can. So, no Bruce split available. Poyo trying to protect DY. But with Ori out on the other side of the map, he has the potential to cut those waves. Vici will, at least for the moment, hold that high ground. Yeah, it's, uh, they, they moved into the slow game now from IG. DKB TP out. Any hook shots? No. It was, uh, was getting pretty close, though, that's for sure. Wi-Fi TP's on back home to boot. So we got hook shots. We have an Abyssal being worked on for Fly Fly. We have RP. If they want to keep going for these plays in the side lanes, there is a punish, right? For these BKB TPs, it's not just going to be this free guarantee for them. PYW also uh, trying to uh, find some safety here with a potential Aeon disc, much like uh, DY. So both supports looking to uh, try and get out of the chain stun that is available from IG, because uh, they certainly have a lot of it, right? Pretty much everyone's got some way to control you if you count the Phoenix Egg. Well, and for now at least, Vici back to what they've been doing before, pushing out these lanes and dodging fights whenever possible. But with Roche capable of respawning again, what, that's going to be about a minute and a half. We'll see how this one works out, but it's a move with four. Poyo bottom. Ori TP in a moment's notice. All right, Ori. they have a sentry down here for Ori pops on the smoke. Just to be careful. There's the jump in, the hex to open. Fly fly afterwards, stuns up the lion. But down low, Kaka almost dead, ends up getting the hook shot away, but not soon enough. They got the Doom on the Phoenix, Beautiful. and the Manta afterwards. Oh, brilliant play right now from Ori. She's able to dodge the stun, and now Turn gets all that damage out. Can he live long enough? Emo has to back away. And meanwhile, Fly Fly just getting decimated up on the high ground. JT also going oh, down. Oh, Ori just did so much in that fight. And Kaka
Ibaka back again. Do they have enough to kill him off afterwards? Ali also in this, trying to make something happen. Poyo and Old Eleven combo together to bring down the bird again. These buybacks, not enough for IG, as they're going to lose four. VG, they, they know. And they can feel this game and how it's going. And what a fantastic fight there, especially from Old Eleven jumping in there with the stun and the doom. God, so much damage out from that. <laughs> Freaking tiny in the lean of that okay. whole time. It's always the bottled DD, right? Right. The bottled illusion at 33 minutes making the big play. Very nice stuff there from Beachy. And here it is again. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I thought that it was looking pretty good for a moment, but when they just couldn't bring her down. Look at this. How low freaking Ori gets in that illusion. And, the, and he bashes the illusion. Like, yes. That can change so much there in that engagement if he gets the right one there on that first swing. But uh, certainly the star of the fight's got to be able to land with that initial stun there too. And well, they're just wondering there what to do on IG. What could have been and what's to come. Yeah, JT's got to find the big plays, right? I mean, he's there, you, you see him. He's checking out, what do I got to do here? But this is this is not the frightening Magnus we've seen, right? But to be fair, he hasn't got to play near his own base. You know, you think about all those mag highlights, that's, that's kind of where most of them are. But he's had the horn toss for a long time and I feel like I haven't really seen the, the massive horn toss breaking plays that we're used to. Just oh, playing very he, tight on the side of EG. He can pull it back here as we get towards the later stages. This one 35 minutes in and Beachy taking control of this map. It's going to be a minute until Aegis is up. Most yeah. likely the vision from this clockwork will be the yes. big turning point if they're uh, able to make a good fight happen for IG and of course JT's plays. Yeah, and that is a hard thing to even figure out right now for IG. What is a good fight for them at this point, right? It feels like it just has to be straight up a blow up on the Ori. Like, that, that's the most likely scenario to me. You know, he's got Satanic, he's got BKB, but they certainly have the heroes where you could chain stun and kill him very quickly if there's not a fast response from Vici. Game, you can see the differences between them. Both uh -huh. mid laners doing so much damage, getting involved in the kills. A couple more deaths for Ori, but they need to be absolutely perfect here from IG to finish this one off. And they, they've recognized what IG need to do on the side of Ichi. And so you've got Old Eleven with the uh, the locked up Aeon disc, right? He's ready. Yeah. DY gonna buy it next. You have uh, PYW working just about towards that as well too. So. They know it's one big fight that IG really needs to get back in this game. Like one big buyback crazy Roche fight, and they don't want to give that one burst of a hero away. And you know, as Doom, you know, you don't really care if you're dooming people with your Aeon going, right? You, you just want to doom them. You just want to remove them yeah. from the engagement. Exactly. So, will they be able to make that work? We've got the standoff across the river from each other. And Kaka and the Skeletons hanging out. Roche is up. Oh. Fly, fly. Doesn't okay. decide to go in. We actually just got a late tome delivered to Emo here, too. Okay. So that's going to put him to 25, I believe. DY face checks the Roche pit. Sees that it's up now. Uh, this 25. What a timing. So two more slate of fist charges. This is big. Fly, fly. Trying to take this down. Smoke's going to break. They'll throw out the Cinder Brew. Moves on in here. Ori coming to join his team as they get ready now. for this fight around the pit. Jump forward. There's the catch from Old Eleven. Chiba's guard afterwards. Out. DY walking for the back line. Gets the lift up onto the Phoenix. So Bruce Split has been committed at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's pushing them back, but they're not jumping into this fight right now. Oh, good discipline by IG to hold off for the moment. DY looks for another lift up. Has it there on the bird. And Emo going to push out mid. As Vici smoke up, look to find an opening here. This could be huge for them. But that double slight and then the remnant away is going to keep Emo surviving. Oh, jeez, Kaka just staying in front, trying to pop smokes. Trying to be the sacrifice here. It does not have buyback on that clockwork. And he's got to expect he's the one to make that big turnaround play. Only a couple of them there. Yeah, he's got one opening right now. Only the Ember and the Mag have buyback on the Radiant. Jump in, Hortos finds DY. He has buyback nice. if they kill him here. He's caught up on that little clip, and they will bring him down. That's a cheap kill, right? You know, just Hortos. That's exactly what you're looking for right now. See if you can force that buyback. Oh, yo, yo. They're waiting. They have that buyback ready. Looking for it. The toss back potential there. Or just have a toss up in the air. LSA afterwards. Bringing him down low. Do they have enough for Ori? Yes, they do. 
Now the horn toss catching onto Ori. Oh, right they can do it. They have the egg in the pit, but the big jump comes out afterwards. Old Eleven hoping to keep the control on the back. He's dead. Ori ends up falling afterwards. No buyback for that Lena. Is this the fight that IG have been waiting for? They've got Mag coming back in in a few minutes here. The big RP connects there. The double kill, but do they have enough afterwards? Horn toss, EY in trouble. Repoya Yo walks back in now onto Fly Fly. Old Eleven hoping to get right on top of that Wraith King, but oh, instead they turn their sights on Evo and take him down. Triple kill for Old Eleven. The man, the myth, the legend doing it all. For Vici on the big stage, but they buy back on the two cores. Now Boya Yo, he's in trouble. JT gets the skewer back and away. They have vision on top of that tiny. Old Eleven looking for another jump up. Gets the hook stop, but it's not enough in the end. IG win the fight. There's still two buybacks left on Vici but they might have to give up this Roche. They had so much vision in that fight there too from IG. Even when the play was coming back at the end with Old Eleven, they saw him coming back trying to make the save on Poyo, but they were fully confident they were going to get the kill in time here. So IG waiting for the moment they find it. What an absolutely fantastic egg in this fight. Ollie has carried them through the majors on this Phoenix before, and just finding that perfect spot where there's just no way, right? He's abusing the cogs that were laid out there from Kaka to ensure that he was going to be safe. That Sunray's doing so much work for your team in this fight. Unbelievably impressive showing. And of course, you talked about that 25 being done for Emo right before yeah. the start. I mean, in that fight, he did nine sleight of fists throughout the whole course of it. And IG, they're not done yet. Well, JT finding those plays, right? This is what you need in the late game. Doesn't matter what happens early, as long as you get the win in the end. Doesn't matter if you leave an Aegis or two. Well. They're up now onto the high ground, taking down these tier three towers and hoping to get some buybacks or maybe more out of this. Smoke up from three, they have buyback on the Doom and the Tiny. It's not IG. often you see this with an 11K lead that someone's just in your base taking these buildings. Jump in, Hex, trying to get some separation. PYW in trouble, Aeon Disc afterwards. Lift up now onto the Doom, he didn't get that PKB off. They take down the Lion, dead for 70. Do they have that much left now? Emo turned upon, they also have the control on the Kaka. He falls, no buyback. Seconds fly fly. He walked into the sentry though, but old 11 getting a little bit of separation and dead. He's coming back in a moment. They get the egg, but it's not on the high ground. They weren't able to do it. RP after it's on a three, but Ori is there it's on the outside. RP. Wanting to chase and find themselves a couple more kills in some trouble. Fly fly, nowhere left to go. He too will die. Two minutes, no buyback. Emo trying to salvage this for his team as JT also heads away. BG Gaming respond emphatically with that one. That was at a high cost though for sure, right? That was a lot uh, in terms of losing your base. You have a buyback there on 11, which can turn to a, well, a dieback in the end, can turn into something in the next fight there too. So that'll still be there. Maybe you get Poyo Yo as well. He did buyback during that mess too. So some dangers here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this game on a knife's edge at this point. The scary thing is, I don't want to go anywhere near their base right now with uh, the potential for just like dead heroes for two minutes, you know, on the side of Ichi. Yeah. You do not want to be the one who gets horn tossed back to the tier fours and dies. And it, we've seen that happen time and again throughout this TI. 4,000 gold lead is all that separates, but really, like you're talking about, it's those buybacks that really determine how this is going to end up going. You can see the big swing back afterwards. And the buyback only being on the Phoenix and the Clockwork for the moment. Everybody else except for no, Ori, pretty much on the timer. He does have that in this game. Yeah. And they uh, they could wait the four minutes here too. And of course they'd have a two minute window where they would actually have the buybacks on all three of their cores for IG. And you'll still have that, that two minutes or so where you won't have it on the Doom and the Tiny. So that, that's sort of the ideal scenario here for IG. Tiny trying to get into that AC himself. Koyo Yo. You can see IG playing very defensively, staying inside their base. A Daedalus done for the Ember. So he's going to be dealing out some serious damage in these fights. So he swaps that one out for the bottle. They have so much right click damage there, too. I mean, uh, several times you're seeing this, uh, this Wraith King empowered, has the 25% cleave talent. Mortal Strike now has the minus two seconds cooldown, so. Uh, the swings are most certainly big. You just need a little bit of control there. And imagine that uh, Kaka would love to have found that uh, that Aghanims this game, but just needing too many defensive items, unfortunately, because keeping the chain stun going is a bit rough for them right now. A lot of that pressure onto JT. Delivering in the late game, for sure. 
But uh, one fight, two fights, still not enough. He needs a lot. We need to keep it going here on IG to continue to build that momentum. And for now, at least, Vici waiting for, of course, the next Roche, but also that next big set of items with the AC done on Poyo. It does help to mitigate that physical damage quite significantly. And this is uh, the stage of the game where Dota gets a little bit weird because you, you have to run around as a unit a lot of the time. It's very difficult to actually separate uh, unless you have like very good escape mechanics and like TP boots and everything. So uh, this is where the vision really starts to suffer when you don't have dedicated vision heroes as a support player because you, you can't just like flare all the way around. You can only really ward where you're following your team. So uh, they are going for some pretty defensive wards inside of EG, staying up on their own side, but they're going to have a very hard time figuring out what angle IG is coming from. Right. You can see playing with not a ton of vision right now. Emo thinking about going in to start this fight on the DY. The root is there. Aeon Disc going to proc. So increasing that cooldown, definitely valuable. And immediate D wards here. You know, they're just going to check the, the common yeah. spots. That's what you want to do if you're IG. Look to suffocate Vici with the vision. And queuing up the rapier next for Emo. <laughs> Look at this right. courier down bottom, too. It's just sitting there waiting. Yeah. Just wants to finish off that refresher here for old 11, and that will be masterful. Get the double doom out in these fights. I mean, double hook stomp, double everything, BKB. It's all good. Well, speaking of which, though, Pressure it's also done. done for JT. All these fights are going to get mad. I mean, it's it's either very simple or very complicated. Yeah, <laughs> depends how many heroes get RP'd. <laughs> and who gets That can doomed. make it really easy. Yeah. Likewise, who gets doomed? Yep. But bottom lane going to get pressured in again by Vici. So IG will hold this side of the map. Because that aid just got reclaimed so quickly after they picked it up, it's just this long window where if anybody steps too far forward and gets caught, could be the end of the game. Yeah, there's just so much burst damage on both sides. Definitely. Oh, and Ollie also going for a refresher. So. Yeah, that's right. Ollie actually still not having a real saving item here. It just has the Yules, so the positioning of Ollie, perhaps the most important. Right, if he gets doomed at the start of the fight, that just changes everything. He's just going to hope that Emo. he dies so he can buy back. Shows, DY. Walks high ground, rooted, hook shot afterwards, they find a good one. That's old 11, DY, Aeon disc out afterwards, gonna pop the ulti, and try and go in for more. Breaking the Lincolns on Emo, now old 11 has an opening. <laughs> That's gonna send him back. Trying to find it, old 11 gets the catch there, on to Kakano, also zoning out JT, who's looking for a big jump in. Now the Yule Scepter lift up onto that tiny, Egg is down. The fight getting very weird as they lose the Lion. What else do they have left now? Oh, gotta be careful, Fly Fly. They throw out the stun. Poyo looking to cover. JT doesn't get the skewer back. The retreat together from Vici. They still have that buyback on the Lion. If IG fully commit. PYW is just holding onto that. Nice play from Emo. Just BKB and dove the back lines. Went yeah. for the big hunt there onto the Lion. And again, just utilizing that vision there too, right? Makes your fight so much easier. I feel like every time we have a team fight, the vision is just all IG. And that makes it so much easier for them to play uh, with the Ember Spirit. Opens up his game like crazy. And PYW, I mean, just doesn't really have a way to save with the exception of an Aeon Disc. As soon as that's down, it's over. Has an aesthetics now, though, so there, there you go. go. Well, fly, fly. Oh, Boy, man, Boy, was crazy. That, that's the kind of territory where you see, I mean, just like Shamil, right? Of course, he was on the tiny's ball, but like that, that's where the Horn Toss can just get you. Yeah, and they still have a minute until those buybacks are back up. Old 11 still some amount of gold away, but he's going to regain that super fast. As almost everybody has buyback up, IG do. And by the time this Roche fight happens, I think everybody in the game will. Ten so, heroes, maybe? You know, can we get another one of those? There's a chance. I feel like this time there would be diebacks, though. I think this fight might be it. Yeah, it's all culminating here. Rooted. God, Looking he for it. Wait, so he didn't hard. Hortos. Poyo pops the BKB. And now the back out. Ori wrapping as well. They've got that vision on favor of IG. DY <laughs> spinning in a He's circle. He's still playing loose, this guy. <laughs> this Aeon disc just now came back up. But they proc it. And then the runaway. Really nicely done there by Emo. So important in those fights. 
have that Aeon Disc done. And that Roche, it's about to be back up here. IG gonna know right away between the flares and just leaving a Helm Creep in there. They're essentially destined every time to know first. Yes. But VG, it's a bit more of a question. And there it is, and Flyfly gonna go right in. They don't see any of this right now for VG. They're just in the middle, Amber though. zoning them back. DY caught. Oh, but the Hex afterwards, and then the jump in. Aeon Disc out. Do they have enough to kill him off? DY dead. Buys back immediately, and now the fight separated. Kaka goes down. Two buybacks so the far. All is just not here. He's running. The rest of them are nearby. They turn, they try and get the kill, and they'll get him. DYW down and dead, but that's BKB's also down. Gem on the ground, and DY will go and pick that one up. Back in the pit, Fly Fly, working away at Roche. They have to know about this. Got some buddies helping. This is scary times. They have that rapier done for Emo. A ton of damage ready. Looking for the opening, but DY, he gets the ulti off. Now the turn. Doom, oh, almost throws it out there. Doesn't get it onto the Lotus Orb, but they have two rounds of it. The Phoenix. Rapier's still there. They're looking for that opening. Try to take them down, but he gets the Evil Scepter afterwards. Control, does he get the egg off? They do the other one. Now the Ori RP. ends up falling. The RP afterwards. Do they have enough? They try and kill them all off, and they will. The Rapier doing way too much damage in this fight from Evo. They I'll have do? no control at all. And IG, bring them all down. But was he doomed? Because it, it doesn't really look like it does. It just keeps <laughs> walking at you and swinging. And all lead this Phoenix. Excellent coverage there from JT. Can't do it by himself, but he's got a couple of friends to help out there. And yeah, that big old damage with the oh, rapier. Oh, danger, danger. Refresh and the jump in. Oh, Puyo. Tries to come off. Life by almost dead. Old 11, the Aeon Disc is profit only. On the other side, tries to do it to him. The BKB out. Ori, does he have enough in the tank? The Hex is there on the fly fly. But the real damage dealer is going to be the Ember up on the high ground. Old 11 pulled back in, brought down dead. He's gone. No buyback. Two minutes. Aegis is down. They get it. It's snapped by Puyo, but is it enough? They might just kill him twice. JT on the side, the right click's coming in from that tiny. He is so large and hard to kill. Ollie again, caught broken, yeah. one more punch. It's not enough. There's gonna be the lift up again. Ori tries to turn out on the JT, Emo but he's in fight. There's no vision. They don't have it. So much healing out from this Phoenix. Ollie eventually will go down, but it comes at the cost. As the Ori is the only one left now. Toyo comes back alive though. LSA off the mark. Ali turns, blows him up. She's Look gone. at the Daedalus. Crick comes out as Poyo wants to salvage. This is a triple kill for the Tiny, but he's all left alone. Nobody left on his team. Poyo eventually too will fall. Emo didn't go down in that fight one little bit. Balance. I, I don't even understand how many slides he just did in that engagement. That was unbelievable from Emo. What a play from IG from and losing G. and leaving an Aegis. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? I told you, they were fine. They Who were never concerned. <laughs> Unreal. They played that last fight so well. This, I mean, you can honestly just go back and only watch Emo through that fight, and it was absolutely thrilling the way he just like spaced perfectly the entire time through that engagement. Remember, we're, we're dealing with a double doom, and it didn't feel like it, right? No. Early game felt like Old Eleven was hitting everything. Late game, things just switched. The three from IG there, JT, doing a fantastic job of controlling the match in the late game. Really come online with that Magnus and proving once again why the hero is looking really strong. And I mean, we, we said the fights in the end, they can either get really simple or really complicated. It was a little bit of both. The real simple thing was that when you have a rapier ember mm -hmm. with all those slights, if the fights just keep on going, eventually it's going to fall apart. I mean, you pretty much did everything you could ask for at the end of that, right? Everyone oh, yeah. had their Aeon Disc. I mean, we, we're missing a few of the items on the sports, I suppose, like those big ticket ones, but uh, it's all there. It's all available, and it comes down to just, like, who's seeing everything, who's getting the big plays. And honestly, I really do think that Vision played such a massive part in this game. Every time I look, it just feels like IGC at all in the, in the fight, and that's why Emo can play like that. And, again, like, using Ollie with this Phoenix, They've proven it time and time again. We always talk about Kaka and the lion right. and how good he is and everything because he covers that egg so well. He looks like so masterful all the time. But then JT saving that egg with the RP. Oh, so Amazing good. stuff. Amazing plays and a lot more amazing action to come after this. I'm going to head now back to the panel. Thank you so much, guys. You look absolutely gorgeous today, by the way. But we've got to talk about things getting slightly ugly in the kind of the first half of that game between Vici and IG. Because every TI, there's a whoops moment, isn't there? And we've kind of been waiting for that one to come along. So I think maybe we should relive it in all its glory right now. Hopefully. 
I think we're still feeling slightly oh. awkward about it, to be perfectly honest oh, with you. Do you, you wanna, do you want to introduce... I wanted to actually... Yeah, uh, I was like, are you just uh, looking uh, at me? Am I supposed is, to... Is, is Kyle I was, yeah, I was looking for you to, to pluck that one out. I know you like to be the bearer of bad news, Kyle, for yeah. ID. I mean, ID1 is just momentarily, it looked like they might not because they won a Roche fight. And then, well, you can see for yourselves what happened. It looked like Ember was going to take it. Um, yeah, he made a spot. Sometimes you just leave an item on the ground, right, Kyle? Radio yeah, that's. I thought Frankie was about to slam Kyle for sure. Kyle's had an oops moment. He's been one of those on the stage. Yeah, okay, uh, look, look. But... I, I, I dro dropping something is different, okay? <laughs> okay. I had done that True. previous times. I tried to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't just forget. <laughs> it was just you know, unfortunate was a, timing. Yeah, yeah. At least he didn't timing. deny it. There, there, there were times when uh, some players, if you remember, denied the Aegis as well. This time yeah. around, you... It's a gift. It's a gift to your yeah. enemy. But I just, like, how crazy? Because realistically, right, so this is Ember's Aegis. The ground? Like, this is his item. Emo should have taken it yep. and somehow plays this phenomenal game anyway. It, how does that not break you? It's insane. That, uh, it feels like IG and Emo are a team that they thrive under pressure. <laughs> and this Aegis, this giveaway, actually helped them in a, in a, in a way. The, the top fight that came afterwards, that came after this Aegis being stolen by Old Eleven was horrible for them. I thought that their whole game plan was broken. And it truly was. You could listen to their coach. He said, their team is extremely greedy. This is going to be easy. Yeah. It's not easy if you give them that Aegis, if you hand it over. Yeah. I just want to say how nice Lizard is on the desk. He's just like, yeah, them like not picking up the ages, that actually helped them win the match. <laughs> me asking stupid <laughs> questions on the desk, he makes me feel better about them by trying to, you know, give me an out. This man is too nice potentially for Dota too, but we're very grateful to have you here because... IG potentially did look a bit shaky, actually, <laughs> even before they forgot the Aegis yeah. in, in the first part of that game. I mean, Purge, was that something that you picked up on? Uh, the early part, they looked pretty confident once they got the Roche. Then things got a little shakier because they had to play more passively. So, and, and there was a big net worth advantage on the Vichy gaming side for a long time after yeah. that. It took while, it kept getting bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden they finally won some good fights. I think the, the one thing that IG did really well that game was that my almost entire memory of that game is like in the middle of the map somewhere. Mm. They didn't take fights near their base, and that means that Vichy gaming didn't get to abuse the, the extreme power of Tiny. So the game went really long, much longer than it should have been, but you know, they eventually come back and make it work. But Kyle, you weren't 100% convinced by the laning phase from IG. Uh, I mean, you get to a point where you see a, a Doom draft, which has all three cores at the top of the net worth. Like, you're going to be a little spooked. But I think that the Mag, Wraith King, and really just Emo's play, like, at the end of the day, IG's triple core is just strong, especially when you get so late into the game that you've got heroes at level 30. Like, at that point, it's, you know, as Dendy's always said, like, it's not, there's no thinking emo. It's not Dota, it's just chaos. I mean, emo absolutely caused chaos on that that match, but, oh, well, in that game, I should say. The match is not done and dusted just yet, my friends. Carl, what did you make of the way that that emo was, was building his kit out? Oh, well, game? he bought a blink dagger, which is something that you would typically have done historically, but you just don't buy blink anymore, right? Uh, it was a maelstrom early, which disappeared. We we're trying to figure out what happened. We believe he sold it to finish Scotty for the big Roche fight, but I think his usage of buyback, like specifically all inning for the rapier, before that critical team fight where they take the win at level 30, his remnant usage, like the way he's just killing Lion every single team fight, like I, I it, can't believe he's able to do that. It also forced Vichy Gaming into itemizing in a different way. Well, Aeon Disc, yep. it's been popular for a year, then it fell off a little bit after the nurse, but they had to get it. Multiple heroes yep. on the side of Vichy Gaming got it. But uh, when you think about Vichy Gaming and, and the Brewmaster, this hero actually was one of the top contested picks as a position 5 at the beginning of Season 1 in the Chinese region. It fell out of favor, teams figured it out, and it's very interesting to see Vichy Gaming go back to their biggest comfort zone at the main stage. It was okay in the early mid game, but in those later, later stages of the games, it definitely just doesn't feel nearly as good, because as a support, you're less likely to get the Ags. You you're ulti, this, right? And that's yeah, it. You can't hit this like really powerful like 30 minute time where you've got Ags, and maybe if you're doing greater refresh, and you get four splits. That's like yeah. oppressive. Yeah. So it just doesn't feel as good, in yeah. my opinion, in that I, late game. I think it's also a bit rough against Phoenix, because typically, you know, you pop split, and you don't want to fight into this draft anymore, but IG can just use Ag, and especially after the shard like you don't really want to be in that area any longer no matter what mm. your supports are doing so uh in general it's just a really 
kind of classic game of Dota with the like I, I can't second believe they left the Aegis in the pit. The Aegis yeah. in the pit. Like I, that that you just shouldn't how do you do so that? They the smoked game, out. Yeah. Like they just forgot. They were making oh. a move as if they had it. And there's like a global notification that well, this person has the Aegis. Old, old Eleven got the got the email, got the memo. He yeah, jumped in. True. He snatched it. Uh, with Remember? that said, I think the one player we're forgetting though is Kaka on Clockwork. I feel like he was the guy that held those like mid games together. He got that crucial Lena TP interrupt on the top lane. Mm. He forced her BKB. It just felt like every time I'm watching, I just see Clockwork going somebody consistently, and a lot of times he would get out just barely. I think he had an amazing Clockwork performance, mm. and that's the reason they were able to like keep the game going for long enough to make those really good plays later. Yeah. Last pick, got it. I, I do think it is fair to say that we can't count Vici Gaming out just yet. Because it did seem like, especially in, in the latter half of that that game, it could have been anyone's. And also, we have seen Vici now lose their first game, like, for example, against T1, and come back fighting and come back strong. And actually, although IG came into the main stage as the top seed, Vici don't seem to look far behind them, if behind at all, really. 100% oh, not. In the last two majors, the series that they had, one was a wash to zero, the other went all the all the way, and I believe we might see game three here as well. Vici Gaming is looking solid. Ori is beasting. Um, no, no. Throughout the season, he's had some problems. He didn't look his best. DY and PYW had to come in, rescue him. I think it's a different situation right now. You're he just dropped ha-ha on the TI main stage in a lower bracket elimination final, then lost the game. The <laughs> enemy team forgot the Aegis, you all chat them, and then lose the game. I, it's funny, you didn't BM, it, it's yeah. just funny. It is funny. It it's, funny. It's also hilarious that as he blinks into the pit, he breaks their move, he breaks the smoke, mm. and he gets away, he TPs out. It, it, and, and on top of that, I, I think he also played amazing on the Lina. There was some moments there where he was like melee range versus like these super terrifying heroes, and he actually just stayed alive. Like he yeah. actually had a really good performance as a whole. Uh, they just didn't win the game, so we're not talking about him as much. But we do want to see another two games from this matchup, surely. It'd be good. That was a really good match. Yeah. Love to see two more. Awesome. Okay. Well, hopefully, we're going to see two more. But right now, I'm wondering if we can actually hear some words from the captains themselves. So let's first of all check in with IG. Team IG's road to TI-10 started with a bang, winning the grand finals in the Singapore Major in March. With Kaka, they're led by an experienced captain, one who has played in 10 majors and five internationals. After reaching second place in TI-7, he's now heading to TI-10 with a unique perspective and a roster of new teammates benefiting from that experience. Somebody just walked back up to him and over the hex, he was able to set him on to grit, the hex into the stun. A question, question mark, mark in the old chat. All oh right, I goodness. love that. GG, GG's called. Oh, he was just standing go. there. All right. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, spicing it up a little bit. Chen 其他打的就是有时候会打的感觉就看起来就没那么有章法吧。It's been a season of high highs and low lows, ending with a tough performance in June's Anna Major, when the wildcard round sent IG home before they could even see the main stage. 然后有别的队伍在聊到你们的时候或者是有一些观众在聊到你们的时候认为你们是有隐藏实力或者说不一定是刻意的隐藏但是可能就是主观上没有那么大的强的动力导致你们没有打出特别好的状态你们会自己
。呃，对的。然后我觉得外卡赛对我也是非常强吧。然后大比赛我觉得更看一个状态，就是谁状态好谁就能赢，这样。你可以可以想象一下，现在登上 TI 的舞台要出场了，然后这个时候播放的是你们的采访片，这个时候屏幕里的卡卡说一句话，一一句一毛大神的话，就是说就是让我们来看看谁才是真的 TI 冠军吧。Well, Kaka will be relieved that he's got two more chances to lead his team to victory. Here on the main stage, but maybe they're going to do it in two. One of the things about Invictus Gaming、uh, coming into this event, where、well, they they were one of the teams that liked to play the fastest and finish first. But sometimes it seems like, especially in the in the recent matches, Secret, for example, and just now, they may be playing a little bit more conservatively. Or is that just just me? Ah,、uh, hard to say what's going on in their heads. To be honest.、Um, I think, especially when you go up against a squad you have so much experience against, you're gonna just stick to your comfort zones.、Uh, that's why, again, like the decision from Emo to like buy Rapier, no buyback. Like he just didn't have gold for it, right? He's all inning, is such a cool idea, and I think that that ultimately is what separates the teams that we see on Championship Sunday from those that we don't. Is that you play to win the game instead of playing, you know, to survive,、fearful. right, conservatively. Yeah. Do you feel like the reason that Secret was able to take that second game and therefore the series in the upper bracket earlier this week was because IG just played too defensively. I would say that the Secret went into game one like ready to know what was going to happen in the draft. They knew knew there was going to be Alina, and they drafted a really cohesive strategy that heavily countered it, and they executed it really well. And that put Lina so far behind that she didn't even have a chance. So game one was like a wash as far as I'm concerned. I just felt like Secret was ready totally with the with the trap. Yeah. It's very, very difficult and scary to play against Puppy when he's had time to dissect your strategies and pick the right heroes, and that's the vengeful that Burge is talking about. Against that Lina, they just never had a chance. One of the joys of the match at T1 versus Vici yesterday was the support battles.、Mm. <laughs> Dy and Mpyw are they kind of a key winning condition, Kyle, for Vici?、Uh. Hard to say. I, I actually kind of look at old eleven. I felt like he had a bit of an off performance.、Um, <laughs> the supports to me are always showing up. Like yeah, when Py like the thing is they don't have bad games, right? You can count on the Vici support duo. The question is, will the cores have that same consistency of excellence? So in other words, yeah, it, it's on the cores. The support duo, they're the backbone of this team, as you would hope them to be. It's just, are we going to see our our carry show up? For me, when it comes to Vici Gaming, Old Eleven is one of those extremely hit or miss, very high highs, sometimes low lows kind of a player, player types. He can carry the game for you definitely on correct heroes.、Mm -hmm. I completely agree. However, at the same time, about the PYW and DY, what I'm looking. In this game as well, again, is Ori. For me, he is in the spotlight. How he performs on that mid lane is make it or break it. Sometimes PYW and DY are too busy helping him out on that mid lane. We've seen that through the group stages as well to actually dominate the side lanes.、Mm. First game, that wasn't a problem. We'll see in the next one. So, how are you expecting? Well, actually, you know, I'm interested to know how you see Ori matching up to other mid laners at this event. Liz, I'll stick with you. I really think that when、uh, Ori is on his top level. He matches up evenly against any other mid laner that there is. If you guys remember the Star Leader Miner into the Stockholm Major into the Epicenter Major, the team Vici Gaming. He was still he was ba back then with them as well. He was dominating mid lane.、Mm -hmm. Something happened to him during the seasons. It, it just wasn't the same Ori. Yeah, I think la it was last Ti right. He's playing a. Was it Viper mid or Huskar mid against Viper, and he wins the lane? Like solo kills his opponent. Like this is the sort of thing you would expect from Ori, and、uh, this is the kind of matchup you want him to dominate. Well, we are ready to go into game number two. Can IG do it, or will we go to a third? 